So I'm going to say V. Burke's airship. No, I'm going to say whatever you want. <laughs> I'm going to say all sorts of stuff. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. All right. <laughs> Here we yeah. go. All right, going. <clears throat> Live from the uh, mainstream cannabis media empire, I'm Travis Lippert, CEO of Verks Unlimited Limited, better known as Veedberg. I'm Michael Miller, uh, marketing director for PanaceaLife.com, <laughs> a beautiful CBD manufacturer in Golden, Colorado. Yeah, beautiful day out there. Yeah, it is beautiful. It's a day. beautiful day. <laughs> we have an exciting show today. I, I really stoked. can't wait to get into I'm this. Stoked. Yeah, we have Jason Gant from Wilfred. Yay, Wilfred pre rolls. Hey. Thanks for having me, guys. Welcome Good to the show, buddy. Welcome to the show. I'm Jason. I'm a I'm a huge fan of Wilfred. You have no idea. You have no idea. <laughs> you have no idea. I dressed up as you for Halloween in uh, like 2012 or something like that. I've got right. Like I have the costume. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very very familiar with your work. Thank you. That's now, did you job. is that is this yours? Because they 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 ripped off your name, Wilford, on this on the tag. It's this is it's that's the, that's the official uh, costume from the uh, network from when the TV show was on it. it was, was nothing like the actual uh, original uh, Wilford yeah. story. I got I've got one of those ones, the same you got there, Travis, and they're 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 pleasurable. They're pleasurable. To wear. <laughs> Um, they're very comfortable. Mine, mine wasn't so much. Well, when you were doing your show, uh, did you have clothes on under it, or was it just that? Well, you know, or is that a trade secret? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, it, it, I just wear undies and you know, <laughs> put under there. I mean, look, they every year they say, Jason, do you want us to put some air conditioning uh, thing in there because you know they can do that with technology these days with these <laughs> stupid suits? And I'd say no because you know part of the character was um, I always imagine like Wilfred was this frustrated man in a dog's body and. So uh, I was it, was, it wasn't a comfortable thing to wear. And just like I imagine if you were a dog and you had like human issues and you thought you were a human, but you were stuck in this dog's body, that'd be frustrating too. So I, it was a character decision, actor's decision to not uh, upgrade the suit. Nice. <laughs> nice. I love that. <laughs> so uh, I, I think that if we could talk about the show, Wilford, for a little bit before we talk mm. about the cannabis stuff, because I, I know that there are people who are going to be watching or chiming in on comments that yeah. have uh, questions for you. But um, I watched, yeah, I watched four seasons of Wilford um, when they came in. I went back, I watched um, some of the, you know, like the first and last episode of the seasons over the weekend. Mm. And um, I had... I had forgotten how truly genius this show is. Yeah. It's one of the best TV shows that's ever been right. on TV. Right. It is that. truly a remarkable body of work. Um, it is. And uh, <laughs> so, but so in the end with Wilfred, uh, I've heard you describe that Wilfred is a, just a magical mystical being. Um, was he in Ryan's imagination the whole time or? Well, he kind of exists on uh, on a couple of different um, uh, levels, I guess. Um, there's a, a great movie called Pan's Labyrinth, where um, where uh, where there's two realities happening at once, and and, it, and it's, is it part of this little girl's imagination, or or isn't it? And then by the end of the movie, it's kind of both, and that's. And that's always what I wanted to be. I mean, with Zuckerman and I used to butt heads when I first brought the format to America because, as you know, it was an Australian show. Um, it was a different show. What um, was the difference in Australia well, as far as the show? Wilfred was mean in Australia. Oh, uh, was he? he? He was a lot meaner, um, <laughs> but he it was more, I mean, that was a love triangle for a start. And and, and the American version was a buddy comedy just as a, as a, as a right. format of – the genre so already there was a shift um but it really became more about like in the australian version uh in the first it started as a short film and the short film is the first seven minutes of the australian pilot and in it the guy comes home to this girl's place after a date and there's a dog sitting on her sofa and he cock blocks the guy and then it and then in the in the, TV, the australian show the guy moves in so 
there's this ongoing uh, De Niro, Ben Stiller, meet the parents kind of dynamic that doesn't really exist in the American show. So, you know, I never wanted to do the same show again, so we deliberately um, did it differently. But, yeah, back to um, the magical being, Zuckman and I would uh, clash a little bit in the beginning because uh, he'd say that, it, that Wilford was uh, a figment of Ryan's imagination. And I'd say, um, no, Wilford... Um, Wilford exi- Wilford's a magical, mystical being, you know. Like, I mean, he's like the fucking. Um, how do you say the scarecrow isn't real? How do you say that the thing that's <laughs> fucking real? He makes is the Wizard of Oz. The Wizard of Oz is the story, right? So yeah, he's he's fucking real, and he does that, and and the, and the scarecrow does those things in that world. So, but over the years, after over the four seasons. <laughs> People, you know, journalists would ask me that question. And, and in the final season, I was kind of beaten down a bit. And Zuckman and I were both getting interviewed. And uh, they said, is he a figment of, uh, what is what is Wilfred? And I, I said, he's a figment of Ryan's imagination. And then Zuckman turned and said, I actually, I've come around to your way of him thinking that he's this magical, mystical thing. <laughs> yeah. uh, along the way, he, you know, he, um, you know, Zuckerman, um, he got that element. Because when we'd fight about it earlier in, in the writer's room, he'd say, hey, whatever you need to do as an actor to get into the character, and if that means you believe that you he's real, then go for it. I'm saying, yeah, yeah, I, I, thank you. But it's not that. He's fucking real, right? <laughs> because how do you, you know, like how do you explain there's some elements of things that we would always make it that it, it, everything existed that Wilfred did in some human level and some dog level. Um, I tried to avoid dog acting. There was a scene where, you know, a few times over the years there was, you know, he, he's got to rub his ass on the carpet. You know, someone yeah. said, that. dog rub their ass on the carpet. Well, I never did doggy acting. I'm never gonna, not going to get down on my, on my ass and rub my ass on the carpet. Like that it doesn't dignify the character and it doesn't, it, 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 it cheapens it. Yeah. So what I did is I had, it was a, um, there was like a rug, like a, a rug, and I've put it under my between my legs like a, a beach towel, and you know, wow. just sort of like like this, you know, like yeah. rubbing my, <laughs> like kids do when they come home with a beach towel, you know. And that way, I'd sort of humanized a dog, a dog moment. Smart. Lots of things to talk you about. Did a, you did a. No, uh, let's go. Yeah. You did a great job of um, being a dog. Like some of the, just like. <laughs> Um, I watched a bit with you just talking to pigeons and um, when you got done with it, you're like, get, get the hell out of here. <laughs> it's, it's, uh, I, I think you did a fantastic job just um, yeah. personifying a dog yeah. throughout this, the uh, the whole series. You made but, it seem believable that Wilford was real. Yeah, I, look, I, I say to people, I'm a Wilford fan too. When I watch the Wolf, Wilford TV show, which is very rarely, um, it happens to be on like, I'll um I'll crack up and I'll be like a oh, whole Wilfred, you know. I'll forget it's me doing it, you know. I, I, <laughs> this disassociated myself with playing this stuff, and and if it wasn't for fans writing to me quotes from the show, I wouldn't remember those those bits. They're just not stored in my memory. And then someone will quote something, and I'm like, oh yeah, that's so cool. It's a really cool way to remember it, you know, a cool joke. I think that one of the funniest bits that you did on the show was um, in season one, and you said, uh, "Like, how did how did Jenna get me to stop eating her underwear or something like that?" <laughs> she didn't, and you're making tea with it. It's, I went I went to Walmart yesterday to buy some uh, some props for this, and I at one point I had a pair of panties in my hand. I was going to suggest Wilfred's medicated uh, panties. <laughs> Edible ones, right? Decided not to. CBD, CBD panty tea. Yeah, I want to. I want to show the uh, Wilfred commercial real quick. Yes. Um, let's see if I can make this work. This is your new cannabis line. It's really nice. Taste of California. California, the home of surf, sun. Adventure. Is it playing? Yeah. Hot oh, bitches yeah. hiking, but oh. looking for more than just hiking, if you know what I mean. Standard. Big buildings and even bigger dreams. Rocking cars with no roof, cruising down highway number nine. Water, nice shots. Passionate individuals pouring their hearts out on guitar. Yoga, romantic sunsets, beating hearts. <laughs> and Wilfred Cannabis pre rolls. At last, a real reason to visit California. Wilfred Cannabis pre rolls. A 
available in all good dispensaries. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. that. Feel the freedom of Wilfred. <laughs> I, I um, I because I'm I'm a musician as well. I'm a failed uh, rock star. I was a bit of a rock star for a few years back in the '90s yeah. in Australia, but um, I wrote that song because you know I wanted it to capture um that kind of '80s kind of Coke Coke is it, you know those massive those those outrageous clan, you know brand, brands of cigarettes and, sure. and soda that was just outrageous claims you know and uh it's it and uh and I, and I wanted to you know capture that kind of um you did 80s spirit in that song i actually i i um because I, I sang that song in wilford character so i when i shot it at each of those locations i shot a little bit of uh, him um miming you know lip syncing to the song thinking that i would cut it together as a music video or as a, like a follow-up but I was uh, I was I wasn't happy with it, and so I haven't uh, I, I kind of um, put it on ice. Uh, probably maybe never no one will ever see it. Maybe they will, but I doubt it. But it's it's part of what, um, <clears throat> and I guess this is I'm jumping into the the cannabis line now sure. and the character, and it's something that I really it's, it's very I'm aware of to preserve the um, integrity of that of the character and finding taking a character that exists in a fourth wall conventional storytelling format and bringing him out as more of a almost like a dos Ecky most interesting man in the world type character uh, is something that um, you know it I have to get it right you know like um, here's an example. I mean, you can't. You can. Anyone can put it. Anyone can put a dog suit on, right? But not everyone can put a dog suit on, and it's going to be Wilfred, and it's, and it's going to it's going to work. Now, when we did the first seven minutes, uh, the short film that was so successful back in two thousand and two, you know, it went to Sundance. It won festivals all around the world. Well, Wilfred, when he when Wilfred met Adam, a certain conversation went on that it was a bit of a dance back and forwards. As I said, at De Niro, meet the parents type thing. And Wilfred lit up a bong and offered him the bong. He had one cough. You got a cough to get off. And from then on, like this, the short film was a huge hit. So when we did the Australian TV show, I made the seven, the seven minute short, the opening scene, because I'm like, okay, I know I've got to win audiences over here. I'm, it's doing a dog suit. It can be really stupid, really quick. And it can, we can lose them. People think this is just ridiculous. Some people still did, but a lot of people can be like, okay, I'm with you. So we used that first seven minutes. Then when we came time to do the um, American series with uh, with Elijah, I said I brought this up as look and I said you've got to get Wilfred's introduction perfect, and a lot of the dialogue in that first conversation between Elijah and I was lifted, borrowed, taken from the Australian opening scene way back in this short film actually, because there were certain ingredients to that introduction that were kind of like flagship moments for us that were like. We've got, we've got an audience on side. doesn't mean we're going to have everyone on side. Not everyone's going to go along with us, drive with us. But there are certain certain comedic um, brains that will um, really enjoy this. So I've got to take – keeping that in mind, I've got to bring that over to the, to the brand as well. Um, I'm looking at getting the CBD right now, but there was a bit of pressure early on from, um, you know, partners, potential partners, didn't turn out to be partners who really thought I should come out with like a pet CBD line. But the thing, the, the, I, I wrestled with the issue because I wanted to do it eventually, but to come out first, um, I wanted to come out with uh, cannabis with THC um, in, in, in California because people remember Wilfred as being a certain kind of party boy, right? And when it comes to pet people and their pets and their sick pets, it's not a joke for them, you know, and, and, I, and, I, and I didn't want to, like, send a confusing, as the first time you see Wilfred after he's on TV making us laugh, it's like, whoa, what's he doing? Is he making fun of my sick pet? You know, like, this isn't a joke. So Wilfred can definitely go serious, and, I, and he showed that many times in, in the series. But you have to earn that, and that's an old theatrical lesson too. you got to earn that drama. you got to earn the pathos with comedy and, uh, and fun. So I wanted to deliberately, as a, as a brand, come out with a fun, ad, like you see the ad. Right. The, the, and, and then when I've established that, uh, hopefully it's all going well, 
take a gear change and say, hey, we're not the only we're not the only ones that you know can need some uh, some assistance or whatever, and and come out with a slightly adjusted marketing strategy, but um, it's just so I, I I still feel like I made the right even though the cannabis going down the cannabis path has been very very challenging. Sure, I'm sure every I'm sure every business is, but I mean in California, it's pretty renowned. Everyone knows that with the licensing and uh, we're fully licensed uh, manufacturers but um, the licensing and the regulations and the taxation it's so um, it's very very difficult to enter that's for sure I mean it's growing many companies to enter it at this time is very challenging so um, but I still felt like from a marketing uh, perspective from reintroducing Wilfred um, to a public um, it was the right way to go I was surprised that I could never find like a Wilfred bong at a <laughs> at a store, I was thinking about Wilfred's uh, bong kits that have like a stem and a lighter and a sticker. And, yeah, uh, maybe two dollars and forty nine cents to buy some Gatorade. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that stuff now. I'm talking to a couple of people about that stuff now. Uh, it's a little uh, that that should have, you're right. That stuff should have been done years ago. And and not only both the Australian and the American uh, television series. In uh, many people's opinion, didn't um, didn't really tap into the potential with any kind of merchandising. You know what I mean? You go to Venice Beach and you'll see a picture of you know a t-shirt with the the drug dealer guy from Workaholics. It's like, why don't I see a Wilford t-shirt? Yeah, Yeah. but um, but uh, you know, we'll um, that's something that we'll you know, I guess look at as the brand. expands we've got t-shirts available but that was just really i wanted to have something there when we got the company up but we really just in a um just finished the um concept um stage of proof of concept with the, with the business and sure. um it's been it's very exciting but it's, it's challenging how about this wilfred's medicated cbd bubbles <laughs> bubble <laughs> <laughs> Bubbles with CBD. Oh, I mean, oh, it is. Yeah, we're not aspiring to be uh, professional like yourself. <laughs> we. <laughs> I made I made medicated uh, fog machine liquid. Yeah. Yes, he Why did. Not? Why not? Yes, he bubbles? did. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, or, yeah. or uh, medicated bits of squirrel. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So you've uh, right now you've got three types of pre rolls. Mm-hmm that are in dispensaries in California. Yeah. Um, like what are they? Indica, sativa, hybrid? What? Yeah. Yeah. That's the, that's the three um, different types. They're, um, they're, they're sun grown flower and they're from a farm in uh, Yolo County, just outside Sacramento. It's nice. like probably the richest uh, uh, farm in California with the best farming soil. Um, the guys grow also grow organic uh, almonds, so their uh, process is very uh, traditional from the farming sense, and I think it really shows in the in the flavour. And uh, we got a very very high um, THC uh, level for uh, sun grown at 50, 25, 26, and twenty seven percent THC. So wow. uh, you know it's like a, that's like 10 percent more than than you know a lot of like pre rolls around. Um, sure. So, you know, but, you know, there are challenges with California with having sun-grown people, even, even though I have that, like, I would think that having that higher THC level um, and no trim in there is, um, would, be, would be appealing. But a lot of people seem to, stores seem to think that sun-grown is just um, cheaper or not as good, you know, and, and they'd be more likely to have, like, uh, ingrown that's, passing like 21% THC, but um, there's a little bit of, um, I don't know, they look down they look down a little bit on, uh, on sun-grown, which really surprises me. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'd prefer sun-grown yeah. if I had the choice. Sure. Uh, well, for me, um, Mike, I don't know if you, you met Jorge Cervantes when we were at uh, yes. Canada. So yes. um, I, I stuck up friends with him and, you know, and, and when it came time to choosing flour to go into this, you know, I was at that crossroads. Do I, do I make a choice there? To, um, and I just, I don't know. I just had a feeling I'd spoken to people about stories about the plant being happier when it was, you know, in soil under the sun and the moon. Yeah. 
So I called up Jorge in Spain and uh, just asked him what he thought of it, and he's like, definitely. He said, like, these, there's a definite difference in, uh, in, in like, what a plant or like some of these plants, they never see the sun. He says, not just the sun, it's the moon, it's the star that affects a the plant. They never touch soil. So um, to me, that was like the final thing that went, I'm going to go down that. Um, I know you're not allowed to legally call anything organic these days, but um, to have those kind of traditional farming um, processes uh, applied to to um, cutting-edge um Cannabis cultivation, to me, it just it just makes sense. And then as, as, as from a conservational level with power, conservation and stuff like that, sure. it, that makes sense. But I don't think that message is really um, – I don't think anyone really cares right now in California, maybe. I mean, um, some people probably do. So but it's just one of those things that, you know, like I'm learning as I go and having to make decisions and um, – uh, but that's what I got, you know. Yeah, we got uh, very, very proud of the the flower that's in there, and um, and but we are looking at expanding. Um, in, in in time, I want to bring out like a, a premium premium infused um, black label um, product. But probably before then, I'm looking at um, putting a, um, a hemp CBD. Uh, pre-roll internationally or, and and nationally in some in some territories where THC cannabis isn't uh, available and may not be for some time. Um, I'm I'm sort of doing basically anal- a bit of analytics now as far as the market for um, for hemp pre-rolls around the world. Sure. <clears throat> and you advertise that you personally test the product. <laughs> to test it for quality. Wilfred that. Wilfred advertises that. Yeah, um, Wilfred sure, does. Sorry. Get it right. I'm sorry. Sure I know that he's just a fucking figment of Brian's imagination. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that might dumb as shit. Um, no, it is very real. Like I, uh, I take a lot of pride in uh, in what I'm doing. Um, I've been a, a serious cannabis. Uh, I couldn't say activist because I wasn't actually a- out in public doing it, but I was a pri- private private activist um, <laughs> for a quarter of a cent- more than a quarter of a century. And, uh, and so I, um, I feel very privileged to uh, have a entrant be part of this in- industry at this time in history. So um, it's something that I, it's, it's not something I just do a bit of, for a bit of fun. I am the CEO of the company. I've done everything from design the boxes to uh, I've done sales. You know, I've been I'm door knocking myself. I'm doing a um, demonstration up in a dispensary in San Francisco on Friday night. I'll be there for, I'll be there for four hours in, um, in Barbary Coast, um, Barbary Coast Collective. Yeah. Four are you o'clock, doing it in o'clock. costume or are you just, are you going as you, are um, you going as well? Uh, I'll do it. I'll do it as me, but I'll uh, I'll, I'll uh, Wilfred's never too far away, and if there's an, <laughs> if there's enough public demand for me to get in the suit, you know, I, uh, I I can I can be persuaded, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a um a party in San Diego on uh, on Comic Con that they call uh, Chronic Con. It was like this first um, um I like that yeah. party by uh, March and Ash, which who uh, who um, stock Wilfred Cannabis down in San Diego, and they're, they're, that's where I, I did the launch party and back at 420 and um you know i just rocked up to the party but i had the dog in the bag and i rocked up like you know like a stripper at a bucks party and um and i just you know after a while i got a few drinks and i was and it felt like you know sort of dance floor that needed some break dancing on it and i uh, went and got dressed in the dog suit and you know did the circuit and uh, made a lot of people really happy you know everyone had a lot of uh, took a lot of photos and and it's uh, it's good for me to see that side too because when you make a TV show, you don't see you know you, you you're aware of the numbers of people that are watching you, but you don't see that. So it's good. Right. What other markets are you looking at right now for uh, the cannabis brand? Well, uh, well, we've we're putting together we've got a, a licensing model now. Um, so we're basically still, I mean, we're looking at we're looking at South Africa nice. from the. That's and that was very promising. And I'm um, very excited to get over there and have a look at. They just went um, legal with hemp in uh, September of 20, uh, 2018. So, a very new um, industry there. Um, and, um, but, you know, there's a couple. We're, I guess, I think, I think, I mean, we're talking to a couple of companies up in, um, 
Oregon, but I'm, I feel like the emerging territories may be easier than well established. Yeah. You know, like sure. every, everyone's there, you know. Um, so, but <clears throat> right now, you know, we 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 I've just sort of got a sales team helping me now, um, and we are just trying to you know get a good foothold in California. So. Even though I've got my eye on the prize of um, of licensing to other territories, um, I really got to um, <clears throat> consolidate this brand. I'm like, I, ain't, I, ain't, I ain't trying to dominate the California market. I just want to establish my, char- my, 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 my character, my brand there. Sure. And, uh, and 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 you know, I've got great loyal um, partners like Organic Solutions of the Desert in Palm Springs, and um, and also Captain Jacks in San Bernardino. Uh, and they, and they're like reordering and reordering. Like people are ordering it. I think first time they buy it for the box, but it, it really is good, uh, good weed. And I guess, I guess if, if if there does tend to be this kind of um, preference, this general preference for um, indoor flower, particularly in Southern California, people are going to want variety as well. So it's good to have another some, some other option. That's right. You so you, you you bootstrapped your business, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, very much so, but not a lot. Yeah, yeah. I got it. Yeah, that's exactly what I did. And um, so I, I, you know, I went to a, I went to a thing, you know, one of the one of the new uh, dispensaries that we got, and I, I thought I was rocking up sort of to do a bit of a, you know, a meet and greet. Hi, Jason Gans here, and I realised I was, I was there, and didn't know it, to do a demonstration. And that there were some other, a couple of other brands doing demonstrations as well. It was like one of those um, vendor appreciation things where people come and see the demonstrations. So these other people, they've all got their tables and their and their samples and their stickers and all their, all their stuff. Yeah. And I'm just doing my fucking t-shirt, you know. <laughs> <laughs> a wolf a t-shirt, it's something. <laughs> but um, you know, like I, I mean, we got some money coming in. Uh, some we, we're taking our next step now and got and got. The first time I have money coming in, but the good thing about bootstrapping it is that you really, you don't, you're not gonna get ripped off, right? Um, because everyone wants to take your money, everyone wants to take your money, and everyone exaggerates about what they can, you can get for, give you for your money. So um, there's just a lot of things I found out that are, are where I would normally get someone else to do it. Um, I looked at it and went, I can do that. And I can do it a lot cheaper than what I know they're going to charge me to do it. And um, so I'd get my, my ruler out and my, you know, pencil out in the workshop. And, uh, you know, I designed them boxes. I designed the shape and, you know, the inner, 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 inner bag and everything to it. I mean, there are some modifications I want to make for the next um, for the next batch. <clears throat> That's all part of having a startup. Sure. You, yeah. you don't just don't learn these things unless you actually do them. It's just all theory until you put something on the market. Um but uh, yeah, now you know I'm seeing where you just need to spend money. Um, doesn't matter who what your brand is, but it's the exact opposite to any other celebrity brand. You know what I mean? These guys just have a shit ton of money and they'll throw it in on someone else. Someone else does all the hard work. In this case, it's my own money. I don't have a lot of it, and um, it's just um, the love of the industry, the love of what I'm doing, um, and I, I I love you know I'm trying to. Bring a, a sense of fun and joy to um, to you know cannabis use. I, I talk that in that ad. It's all about the freedom of Wilfred, you know, and the <laughs> and the hope of me on the horse, you know, riding like you know, feel the fun, feel the freedom of Wilfred, you know. It doesn't. It's it, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's that's like that '80s thing. Like Coke is it? Feel what well, is the freedom of Wilfred? Yeah. Wilfred does represent something like uh, that. So I want to, um, you know, it's, it's a feel good brand. Yeah, you captured that. The eighties. Winston tastes good like a cigarette should. You couldn't do that today, you know? No, you couldn't. Commercial. You couldn't. Well, I can't. well that's the thing. I can't until they tell me to stop. Yeah. <laughs> you know, people yeah. people tell me, you know, when in, in the conception of the um the packaging and designs and stuff, I mean we there were people like that drew concerns about it with some of the, some of the regulations that are there. Um, but you know, we did it. We had a good law firm that were um, associated with the um, with cannabis development um, company, and so we designed everything with everything that we've done. 
we've got a robust legal defense if ever it was brought into question. Sure. But sure. if anyone ever said, you can't do it like that, Wilfred, you're breaking the rules, I'd just say, fine, okay, I'll do it differently. And then that'll be, I'll, I'll yeah. suck some media attention out of that event and I'll <laughs> move on to the next uh, thing. You know, I'm not precious about it, but I think it's a case of I'm better off doing it and being told stop rather than run around asking everyone. Yes. If I can Absolutely. How about Wilfred's uh, medicated peanut butter? <laughs> yeah. He's got a list <laughs> in his head. Uh, I, I see that show and I just think, oh my gosh, there's so many. Yeah. I would I would do what Jason's doing though. Like yeah. keep it simple. It's hard enough right. to like, especially like if you're designing your own packaging, like we did here, like just that, that effort of getting that whole thing all put together. You, the box comes in from somewhere and the sticker comes in from somewhere and getting it all put together into one product that you can actually yeah. deliver and, and supply people when they reorder. Yeah. It's a, it's a, it's hard. Difficult, difficult. Yeah. It's a difficult thing to do. Yeah. Um, but it's not, it's, but it's rewarding when it starts coming off. I mean, every day in the, in the business, in, the, in my, every working day, I mean, everything, my whole career and everything else, my writing career has just gone to, Kind of, kind of shit because I'm just like um, this. I love this so much, you know, and and yeah. this is my priority now. And this is uh, the company is always something to do. So, um, but when I when I first got the boxes back, when they first sent the boxes, and they just sent me a couple of uh, copies. I mean, there was a couple of times where I'm like, you really can fall in love with inanimate objects, you know. Like, <laughs> I would have them up. I was on the treadmill and I was just all night just running and these looking at these three boxes. I'm like, fuck, I made an actual like product. Like I made like yeah. something that with the barcode on the bottom. I love and it. Someone can go and give them money and they beep it and then they go home and they consume it. And then to me, that is like um, such a, a massive achievement that um, and to do it in the cannabis industry. You know, I, I, as I say, I've, I've, win, lose, or, 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 or draw, I've already won, you know, because I'm doing something. That I really, really love. Um, having said that, I don't want to lose. I want to. I want to. Yeah, of course. So, uh, I work so hard. Well, what's the rules and regulations in Australia for cannabis right now? Well, Australia are uh, very draconian. Like they're like um, that. They're even that they're they're medical only, and they're like you need a serious serious sickness, like one of the worst ones, and then. And then you got to jump through some hoops, and then we'll we'll give it to you in the way that in this very you know yeah all kind of way they're very um they'll I mean even with cigarette even if even if one day where they're they're legal it's gonna it, they'll never be I can't imagine a day where Wilford Cannabis pre rolls will ever be for sale oh, there wow. and that's simply because they I know like even for cigarettes in Australia there's just there's no branding allowed. Every cigarette, it's a bit like uh, um, Canada with the um, um, packaging for uh, cannabis up in Canada. And Wilfred is all brand, you know. Um, yeah. I need that brand to pop. And so for cigarettes in Australia, it's just everything's black and white. It can have the name on it only in white. Wow. And then pictures of lung cancer and all sorts <laughs> oh, of no. stuff everywhere. And then they tax the absolute shit out of it. So it's like almost 30 bucks for a packet of cigarettes in Australia now. Oh my so, Jeez. And, and I know that they tax um, alcohol just so, absolutely ridiculous as well. So knowing the way the government is with that kind of stuff, when they're going to control the whole cannabis yeah. network, there's not going to be any um, mum and pop stores or anything like that. There's another reason why it's such an exciting time for me to have this privilege in, in America to, uh, you know, a place where you can build a business that you can enter the industry and, um, and, uh, and, and build something up for the dream. Do you, do you have uh, friends from the entertainment industry who have uh, hit you up once they saw that you came out with a pre-roll and said, hey, I want a white label from you? Like, I want... <laughs> No, they hit me up and wanted free weed. That's what I thought. You know. <laughs> yeah. They definitely do that. Um, no, look, I um, the white label thing. I can't, can't enter that as at a, at a strange kind of time um, because there was a lot of white labeling happening with a lot of you know hip hop artists and all sorts of you know celebrities and stuff. But then they uh, um, California threatened to bring in these new regu regulations where the manufacturer themselves 
needed to own a large percentage of the company, maybe wow. 50%. So um, those regulations are still kind of dangling over everyone. Like yeah. they could just suddenly happen the same way they brought in those uh, the regulations for the packaging one day and they had to take everything off the shelves. It looks more unlikely now because a lot of people were panicking. I think they've changed those laws a bit. It's less likely. But when I was coming in, there was some reluctance for people to want to do a white label situation because of those very regulations. So I was determined to answer anyway. So I went down the licensing route and got a um, manufacturing license. Smart move, really. Which, is, which means it just gives me that security um, to know that if the license, if the regulations change at all, you know, I'm not going to have any problem. Yeah. yeah, a lot of people don't realize how committed he is. He's actually in Madrid, Spain, right now. It's our first European Skype. Believe it, but I'm actually, I'm actually in California. Mike. Oh, are I, you really? I was, oh, no. I'm sorry, I'm audience. Here. No, I'm here. I'm here for work. I'm here for work for the seven days. You know, that's why I came in uh, a couple of nights ago. I spoke to you and I was in yeah. Spain, but I, I, I flew in uh, a few nights ago for uh, San Diego. Then I'm in LA. Then I go to Sacramento. I'm going to purchase some more uh, flour for our next batch, and then I go up to San Francisco where I uh, make an appearance at uh, Barbary Coast yeah. Collective. So uh, I'm really, and then I fly out of San Francisco. So um, I, I still have a strong presence here. Um, and I'm going to a couple of stores today with uh, sales reps, you know. So, yeah, I definitely, a, a, any chance I get, I'm um, learning as much as I can about the business and just trying to look at ways to make, uh, make, a, make, a, make a dollar from it as well because <laughs> – you know, as you put something on the market, you know, I, I'm not a cultivator, so um, I'm in the, my margins in the middle, and um, there's no secret that the, the, the bigger percentages are at the beginning and at the end. Um, so you got to try and. If I didn't have a brand, I would have quit. I wouldn't have done it because it's too much. I've got to get now. But um, you know, if I can, uh, if I can find a way to just to get those margins that we're aiming for, then. Um, you know, I'm here for a, I'm here for a long time, hopefully. Nice, nice. Well, that's how committed he is. He flew from Madrid, Spain, to California just to be on our show. Yeah, as just well. to fly over our show. Yeah, fly over. <laughs> you were overhead at one time over the last yeah. couple of days. Yeah. Hey, no, getting into stores is yeah. like the to me the least enjoyable and most frustrating yes. part of this right. industry. Yeah. Um, maybe that yeah. and a little bit of packaging changes like. Um, packaging changes are always pretty painful. Right, but, right. Um, yeah, they can. So, be. getting into a, a store, have you ever gone to pitch a dispensary and have them say no? Oh yeah, <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, and, and and not and not say no in the nicest way sometimes either. You know, like and I, I, um, yeah. So I uh, generally people are pretty good, um, but the, the 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 most frustrating common, you know roadblock I'd find is um, is I'd you know give them a quick spiel either in person or over the phone and they'd be like yeah great that's great I'm going to give you an email address and take down that email address and it's like okay once you write down that email address you know that the, the chance of someone from that email address writing back to you is like maybe one in a hundred you know so okay if, but if I can't if, if someone knows Wilfred and I can get in like a right. person to person conversation with the buyer then I'm a good chance but also, um, there's a lot of stores that they already are full with all the products they want, they need, and that they can sell. And then there's like two new brands coming to them every day. So, um, you know, it's, cutting through all that is uh, is challenging. And, and I say, you know, every store is like a Game of Thrones castle. It's got a gatekeeper. It's got, you know, they, they're, they're like a, um, they've got the confidence of, you know, of a place that's like, hey, you, you need us more than we need you. Yeah. And that's always a good. That's, that's always a good position to be in <laughs> when you're the person that everyone wants. I've been both. I'd rather be you than me walking into a dispensary. Yeah, me I'll too. Me I, too. I could make a lot more. Yeah, yeah. I um, yeah, but I uh, I have I have a lot of anxiety, you know. So it goes against. You know, I'm an extroverted introvert. I'm a natural introvert. I'm a very shy person, and. Uh, Doing sales is, is not my uh, natural thing. I can, um, I, you know, I can uh, work at being better at it. Uh, sure. And I'm, I'm good at selling a story. 
So I guess uh, I'm good at talking about what I'm doing. I feel comfortable talking to you guys like this about it. But it's when you're walking into a place like a job interview or something, you know, yeah. heart's pounding and it's just like, please don't be rude to me, you know, and <laughs> break, break my little, dent, you know, sensitive heart here. <laughs> but, um, but then if it works out good and you make a sale, you know, you walk out, you know, walking on air, you just feel amazing, you know, and, and, and there's been some great partners like the guys down at Captain Jack's that were like, um, you know, I reached out to them. Because um, people on social Instagram are like, um, "Oh, come to Captain Jack's." So I like took a screenshot and sent it to Captain Jack's Instagram and said, "Hey, you, um, one of my fans would, you know, want you to stock my pre rolls," and they were like, "Email me straight away." And I was on the phone with them ten minutes later, and the next day I drove out to San Bernardino and met, you know, met uh, Jake out there, the manager, and. Um, he just wanted to help, you know. Yeah. Just wanted to, just believed in it and believed in my story as well as loved the show. And um, if I can um, get enough partners, you know, people like that to listen to the story and want to help me sell it, then uh, then I may I may have something. How big is a manufacturing run? Like you said that you're going to buy some flour to do a new run, like um... around about at this point about five thousand boxes. Let me do seven. Yeah. Half grams, so about five thousand eights is I think the next one we're doing. The first one I did was seven thousand five hundred, and we still got a bit of them, but we need to um, get the next ones ticking over so we don't uh, run out. Yeah. What was it like working with Elijah? Oh, he's great. You know, I mean, he was uh, he was. Give us know. the dirt. No, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> There's no, there's no real dirt to find on a guy like Elijah. I mean, uh, um, I was always kind of on my best behavior around him because uh, I, you know, I'd had a bit of a checkered past myself and I was a bit of a wild guy in my younger years and I didn't, never needed much encouragement to go off the rails and, uh, and, 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 you know, and from time to time you can upset people. And so my, I always valued uh, Elijah's, role that he took on in Wilfred. It, his, his signing on changed my career and I was always grateful for that. So um, we were very, very good friends on set, but, I, but we probably socialised off set a couple of times yeah. totally in, in a group situation. We weren't we're, – we're different kind of guys. Sure. Yeah. But, he's, but he – as far as uh, I mean, he was he was he's a fantastic actor. I was uh, you know a bit starstruck when I met him, and I was just kind of like, holy shit! Like this is <laughs> <laughs> this shit's happening. <laughs> His story, Elijah. I mean, I it, it's a no brainer that Elijah um, was uh, was um, cast as Ryan, and as soon as he expressed an interest in it, to me he had he had the role, but it wasn't up to just me. And um, he, there was, you know, one or two people that, that, you know, weren't certain. And so they, Elijah had to read for the role, had to test for the role. And when, they, when you do a screen test for anything, they always pick three people and they give them, the three of them, the deal. They do three deals and all three do their test. And then the network and uh, the producers choose one of them and that their deal happens and the other two poor bastards that you know right. lawyers just agonize over a deal never never happens and so i really wanted elijah to get the role and the other two guys there was nothing wrong with them as performers but i didn't feel like they just connected with me the way elijah did I, I feel elijah's just his filming sensibilities there was there was a question raised about whether he could do comedy and i'd said you know this we don't want comedy actors in here trying to make a name for themselves trying to be fucking funny Wilfred, the, any comedy that comes from Wilfred is one sto- one joke, and we're all telling it. And it's the guy, and, and it's, he sees him in this way, and he can really talk, and the rest of the world sees a dog. And anyone who's in there trying to be funny, making a name for themselves, is just going to fuck it up. So I felt like that Elijah's performance was the only one that really genuinely got it. But so it came time to the actual screen test on the day. And I said, I'm going to get in the dog suit for these guys. And I wasn't going to, even though I, I wanted Elijah, I wasn't, I, I was determined to give the other two guys my very best sure. as well. It was up to them to win the role. 
So here I was, Elijah had seen the, the Australian version or something. So he, he, he was a fan of the show. And just before I, it was his test, I went into the bathroom in this, uh, in the Twin Towers here down at, uh, in, in Century City. And we're up in this tall building and I'm like, I'm in LA and there's these network exec- executives, they're like, there's all these like big producers lined up. And I'm in the bathroom drawing on the black nose and I wear in this dog suit that's just called back to my old depressed theatre days as a young actor. And I just thought, this is a bad joke gone too far. How does <laughs> and now I've got Elijah Wood out here. He's about to do a fucking scene with me. In the <laughs> dog suit. And these people are taking it seriously like it's going to be a real show. These people are all idiots. This is a terrible idea. So I came out there and um, I acted off him in the dog suit and uh, and he won the role, of course. And uh, but, but that there was it was surreal. It was yeah. definitely surreal to be like working off an actor, of, you know, of his his um, his stardom. And and there's some people that are fantastic actors, and he's uh, is that. But there's also there's I guess what makes a movie star, you know, someone yeah. that just has that presence that is that, that extra something. And right. he definitely uh, has that. The je ne sais quoi. The X factor. The X factor. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I always ask people this. And I feel stupid. Well, are we closing? You. No, we're not quite closing yet. Uh-huh. But uh, yeah, is that I have a feeling that you, you might not say what? Do you always close on that line? I no, always, but close. No, I, I just want to know. I just want to know if you know any jokes. <laughs> uh, he's asked senators this that we've had on the show <laughs> for Senator Diane jokes. How about in lieu of a joke? What uh, can you tell me what you think some of the funniest bits are that, that you've yeah. done throughout your series? Like I have some of my favorites, like the, uh, uh, well, you know, I, I, I've, I've sworn a couple of times, so I guess I don't know what the real is as far as, um, as far as, uh, you know what I say, but my favorite one. I think my favorite bit, um, my favorite joke. One of my favorite jokes was when Wilfred had um, uh-huh. he lost his sense of smell, uh-huh. and he says, "You know, I've heard of temporary blindness, like when Stevie Wonder and Ray Charles walked in on each other masturbating." <laughs> <laughs> me, like that joke to me. I spent I spent a lot of time thinking about that, like that scenario. You know, like visualizing and how that happened. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> what were the circumstances <laughs> behind that event taking place? Because when Wilfred says it, he meant it, you know, like it's real. But, the, but one, of the, one of the jokes I'm proudest of is um, I always say I love doing things that have never been done before, which is a, another reason why I'm doing this brand a lot. You know, it's, it's kind of a historic event for where I come from. Sure. But um, it was a joke that we that me and another writer were, were workshopped Riff and I in season one, where Wilfred um, gave a blowjob to yeah. a, um, a booted dog himself, <laughs> and and, uh, and, uh, and and came in his ejaculated his own mouth, and um, and so um, he's looking at the showrunner when we were like we were pitching over this the thing, and he's saying no, nah, he hated it. And he's like. <laughs> It's not getting in there, and we're like, "Come on!" It's, it's. I said, "I don't need to have watched every episode of television ever made to know that that's never been done." I, I know. It's never been, I don't need to see. It's never been done. No one's ever sucked off a booted doll themselves and ejaculated. <laughs> right and he's like, "No." Nah, and then in the second season, it came up again. We tried pitching it for some some scene, and he and he and Zuckman said, "The voodoo gag will never be in the show." All right, let's just. I just want to make that clear. It's never going to get in. And then I think it was the third or fourth season where they were trying to find a certain joke for a certain scene, and then uh, someone just said uh, "Voodoo doll." <laughs> Everyone just went "Yes," and and Zuckerman himself just went, "I can't believe the voodoo joke's going in the show, but yeah, that's perfect. It is. Uh, I have to say, it's perfect." And so I went in there, and it's still like one of my fa- most proudest moments because <laughs> I knew nothing like it had ever been done before. How dare you? <laughs> that was comedy gold. Another moment I like, uh, I, mean, I always loved cracking Eliza up. I took a great pleasure in cracking him up. But one of the, it was the scene in, in the season one, I think it was, where he was a mad scientist and he was trying to poison Elijah with uh, Theobroman, which is poison to dogs. It's in chocolate. And he, and he realized that 
chocolate wasn't poisonous to everyone and so it was a waste of his time but in, in the basement there's all this um uh science lab stuff and it all explodes and there's stuff and and ryan grabs wilfred and drags him out as wilfred's like being you know overcome with all the smoke and everything and as wilfred's coming to he's like um looks him in the eyes and says you saved me why did you save me and he says, you're my friend. He's like, which is why I will never understand humans, which is why we will ultimately defeat you. <laughs> it, was the, it, was the, it was the, you saved me. Why? Like some kind of alien wanting to work out this human. And it was, uh, Elijah just uh, just thought that was the funniest thing ever. And, and, and so those were moments I enjoyed. I bet sometimes on the set you guys couldn't even do your lines. You were laughing so hard. Sometimes, sometimes yeah. it takes a lot to make me, me a uh, corpse like that. Uh, no. It takes a lot. But there were some times where I, uh, where Elijah and I lost it so much that we were pissing people off. Yeah. But that, <laughs> yeah. You're yeah, hilarious. It's yeah, but it's over now. We've got to make, we, you know, we've got to, people want to go home. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> it's just, you can stop and get the same part and then you just start bouncing, laughing again. And, yeah, that's cool. I, I like I like I like I like stuff. I like watching other people get upset around me. <laughs> um, there, was a, there was a there was a Mr. Patel, the Indian uh, character that was in uh, season um, season one. He was the guy from Forty um, Year Old Virgin, and we just loved. I love this guy, and um, and uh, and but. The showrunner and the director didn't because he had a lot of trouble saying his lines, and he didn't have a lot of lines. Um, but he was uh, he had a lot of trouble spitting them out, and um, and he was driving you know because in television there's that urgency you got to keep it going, keep moving on to the next scene, with money, and um, this guy just kept fucking it up, and in, and, I'll, and the angrier uh, Zuckerman got, the more joy it brought me, and uh, in between <laughs> in between takes, poor old Mr. Patel was coming up to me, you know. I, the eyes, eyes sort of semi-filled with tears, like, I, I don't know, I don't know what's happening. I, I knew all these lines last night. It was what every actor says and they can't remember anything. <laughs> I knew all these lines last night. I'm I said, and look, what you're doing is amazing. It's awesome. But don't worry about it. Just keep doing what you're doing. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> I wasn't going to be able to help him learn his lines, but sadly they, they wouldn't bring him back. They didn't bring the Patels back in, after that season, oh. so that didn't work out for them, but... Um, another guy was Peter drove him crazy. It was Peter Stormare from uh, Fargo. I don't know if you know the you know. Peter he's one of those actors. He's in Fargo. He's the guy that puts Steve Mashimi in the wood chipper machine. One of the killers right, in yeah. Fargo. He's a fancy. He's a brilliant actor, you know. And we work some brilliant guest actors, and he's one of the best in the in the business. But he was playing a homeless guy and he had all these ideas, you know, he had all these ideas he wanted to show the, to the director and he wanted to try all these different things. And, you know, they don't want to do that. They just want to do what we've rehearsed and get it done with and move on to the next scene. So uh, that was always funny watching um, them have to respectfully listening to this genius actor, genius eccentric kind of actors, kind of crazy ass ideas. And you know who else did that? Rutger fucking Hauer. Oh my uh, God. Rutger Hauer drove our director crazy with his ideas, but I loved it. I love, I love the Hitcher. I love working with Rutger Hauer. He just brought this presence to it. These stars, man, you know, you got to give them a little bit of uh, room to, to, to do what it is that they do, which, um, sure. Which can be mad, you know. It might be maddening when you're when you're in the crew trying to keep it moving, but you just need to capture some magic once, and then uh, you got a great show. Where are you on the uh, internet? You're on Instagram a lot, right? Yeah, What's yeah. I'm on Instagram now. Um, I got the at Wilfred on Instagram. Um, I've still got Wilfred on Facebook, which seems to have a lot of people on it, a lot more people on it, like eight hundred or so thousand. But I don't know. Um, they're different people. Different people like different things on, on Facebook. And if I post something on both, if there's going to be anything critical by people, it's going to be on Facebook. Sure. Really? Yeah. It's going to be my Facebook fans that will be like, ah, we don't necessarily approve of you doing this at this particular time. Okay. <laughs> um, very rarely, but... Um, it happens. Haters. Facebook is haters now. 
a lot of them. They yeah, are. I don't know. I think, yeah, I mean, go on Facebook these days. I think everyone's so familiar with it. There's that kind of sense of um, ownership and entitlement to it. You're in my house. You're on my Facebook page, and you play by my Facebook rules. Right. I can tell you exactly how I feel, and if you don't like it, you know where the Facebook door is. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, whereas with, with Instagram, there seems to be more of a feeling of like, hey, we're at this awesome party. We're not even really sure. If we're, right. we're, in, we're here with a friend, but uh, is it cool? I, I really like that. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, yeah. I like Instagram I need to get a lot more. better. Really? Yeah. I need to get into it. Facebook is just, like right now especially, it's so much politics. Yeah. You know? It gets uh, old. I, I definitely unfriend a lot of people now. Well, yeah. I get on um, Facebook. I mean, maybe it's the age I'm, I'm at, and I've got a lot of people on there, but every time I open it, someone's died. Someone's died or their pets died. Yeah. And everyone, and it's and, and as an, as an eulogy, someone's eulogy. Yeah. I like my personal eulogy, and it's like I'm not being critical or whatever, but uh, or, or there'll be some monologue from someone that you know that five years ago would have no one would have ever re- written, read anything they wrote. You know, right. they maybe write a shopping list at the at the most, and now all of a sudden they're sort of saying, you know, after 18 years of devoting myself to this company, it's time I do something for myself and my family is supportive and everyone's like you go for it buddy but it's like these people are having these public epiphanies where they're like sharing so much and it's it, it's really interesting because um so these very people years ago wouldn't have, you know never they would never open up about themselves right. they wouldn't talk about themselves or talk about touch so, so, so yeah it's always someone dying or someone's pet right. dying and then you've got the the repeat posters. I mean, just I woke up at seven this morning. I just had breakfast, just right, like that right. all day long. Yeah. It's like, yeah. do you work? You know, yeah. <laughs> I don't care what time you wake up. <laughs> the thing about Instagram and stuff, and they tell you, you know, you got to keep creating content, you got to keep doing it, keep doing it. And, but to me, like it's a fine line because I don't want to. If I do too much, I'm gonna. Um, I don't want to dilute. Um, right. Either my own image or the image of the dog and what I'm doing, and so. But at the same time, I, I can't, I can't spend. I mean, the camera guy who shot um, that ad you saw. Right. He's he's the guy who actually shot the Wolford series, and oh, he's. Right. I get him to do everything if I get if I have a camera guy, but you know he's he does mates rates for me, but he's like he's still you know eight hundred bucks nine hundred bucks a day you know so. I, don't, I can't spend that kind of money every single time I want to get the camera out and, and do something Wilfred related, you know, Wilfred right. cannabis related. So um, I've got to, you know, choose the marketing projects that I need, want to put money into and that I want to make really like that commercial. Um, and I've got to choose, and then other things I need to, um, you know, be smarter about how I can create a bit of content, but also not uh, damage or dilute the brand. So that's a. I'll take that as a soft pass on the medicated squirrel bits <laughs> and the peanut butter. Man, I'll tell you, if you do medicated peanut butter without at least letting me uh, know about it and get a sticker or something, I'm gonna be very I'm upset. Saying, uh, I'm open to things. I'm open to more open to things. You know, there's a there's a guy in the original short film of Wilfred, and he was a, he was a, he was just an assistant, a first AD. And there was a line at the end of the short film where Wilfred said to Adam, um, yeah, we'll watch a DVD and we'll make nachos. Um, and the line then said, do you know how to make nachos? And he said, yeah. And he said, good, right. So, and I, I, I shot it a couple of times that way. And then this first AD said to me in between takes, he said, hey, you know when you, um, how you say, do you know how to make nachos? Yeah. I don't think it would sound good if you said like, you do know how to make nachos, like almost like assuming you do know how to make nachos. And I said, uh, yeah, I like that. And so I did it like that, and that's the way I made it in there. And this guy still takes credit for the, all the success of Wilfred <laughs> being his one suggestion. But um, I I listen to everything, you know. Like I, um, I don't have to take everything on board, but if someone's got an idea for something, whether it's fucking you know, squirrel, squirrel shit-flavoured fucking <laughs> whatever, you know, like – I like I like them to it. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, dog treats that taste like rabbit crap. <laughs> Nobody's doing that. Dog. I love the smell of wet dog. And apparently, not not as many people like the smell of wet dog. I like it, but maybe they'll be smoking it. 
Well, awesome. We've, uh, I want to tell people also wilfordcannabis.com. I forgot yep. to say that. Wilfordcannabis.com. You can check out, um, yeah, wilfordcannabis.com. And well, pre rolls are available in only the finest dispensaries in California right now. If you're, if you have any leads into dispensaries in California, please go to wilford.com or Facebook Wilford or wherever, Canada. call us. We'll hook you up with them. Well, or uh, you have a brand of uh, logistics, YBL. They're, um, they're doing sales for us. But also, I mean, yeah, on the website is a list. You can see on a map all the, the stores that we're in, um, store locator, and, um, you know, there's an info email on there as well that if you if someone like has a store and they haven't heard from a sales rep or anything and they want to, want to carry us, then... We'll find someone and we'll get we'll get it there. Fantastic. Nice. Well, Jason, thank you very much for joining us. This is a real pleasure. Yeah, it's uh, it's really cool talking to uh, somebody that you dressed up as for Halloween so. <laughs> and, and admired. Yeah, and great, admired. Yeah, sure. yeah. What's that? What and, admired. Mark? and admired. And well, oh, thank you, Mark. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Travis. I really appreciate it. It's a great compliment. Thanks for having me on the show. Cool. Well, you have a great luck. day, buddy. Yeah. Thanks right. so much. All right. Bye. Bye. I think we did it. Yay. That was fantastic. He's such a good guy. Yeah. You know, we, we spent some time uh, down in Mexico and uh, a group of us at a expo conference and uh, just a down to earth guy, you know. Yeah. It just, yeah, yeah. real nice. A lot cool. of fun. Well, thanks, Michael. Yeah, great show. Great show. Thanks for joining everybody. Have a great day. We will see you soon. Yeah, bye.